from Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COV is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Good afternoon. This is the COV, all the stuff you need to know about in the day in business and markets. My name is Kyle Rodder with Danny Akuye, of course. Um, Danny, looks like we've given up a little bit of yesterday's rally. It does appear that way, off about uh, four tenths of a percent at the moment. The ASX 200 and the SIBO, well, 0.55. 0.45%. So faded a little bit after 3 p.m., but uh, really no surprise given the lead we had from Wall Street. Yeah, obviously off on Monday, first day of the trading week yesterday, starting to see some of that momentum come out of the market, it would seem. And we do have uh, that big speech, well, testimony from Jay Powell over the next few days before Congress. We'll get to that in time, but um, well, maybe we'll be waiting and watching to see if there's a green light for, well, further upside in equities or not. Um, Indeed. We'll be talking again about skips and pause and pivots and all sorts of moves uh, that the central bank might do going forward. But um, let's get do to the... Do you think we're going to look back on 2023 and go, all we talked about was skips, pause, pivots, you know, it's just like so. we have, yeah. What yeah. were we doing? Yeah, yeah, we will. I mean, I already feel like that with some stuff we were doing just before the pandemic, you know, the trade war days and things of that oh, nature. that's right. Yes, Getting indeed. up every morning and checking Trump's Twitter. All of it seems quite absurd in hindsight, but let's not fall into existential despair. Let's look at the three themes instead. And uh, well, retail downgrades mm. is actually no, it's mm. not to fall into despair. We're going to go straight back into despair. <laughs> uh, retail downgrades, not so good. UBS. I think it was UBS today taking... Yep. Uh, the knife to a couple of their ratings there. Uh, we will look at those stocks in just a moment, but um, again, just the bad news keeps coming in for the retailers. Yeah, but they. I think we um, we might do a deeper dive. They did dis dis differentiate between okay. different types of retailers, so uh -huh. discretionary retailers, which are being very, very hit, but some of the food retailers, particularly the Woolworths and the Coles that continue to pick up, you know, people the eating at home and Potentially Treasury Wines doing better because the higher end of the market will continue to go shopping for their wines. So uh, it wasn't a blanket across all retailers, but definitely the discretionaries. So, you know, the Adairs, the Premier right. Investments, um, those ones being downgraded. Right, so you're still loading up on the Vino. Is that what I'm to take from that? I don't drink during the week. Oh, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, short treasury wines then. Um, fading the China trade. I thought I'd chuck that in there because we'll, we'll look at it in a second. Yep. Um, the materials were off once again. We did run up a lot into the uh, decision to, to cut a few key policy rates there in yep. China. Aussie dollars up, you know, the miners, etc. Energy was very weak overnight. It oil, was. oil price. So that's flowed through to our market today. Indeed. And um, we said before, last three uh, of the three themes today, Powell on the hill. That'll be uh, the two days of testimony he delivers before Congress. Um, that'll kick off tonight. But um, let's move on and look at some of the sectors. Uh, and we've already touched on a few, um, yep. starting with the miners or uh, miners and uh, 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 in fact, actually, we've just had an energy uh, sorry issue with that one, and we're going to go straight to energy now. Uh, the energy players, let's see where they finished. Um, actually, quite mixed. I suppose we are seeing a bit of a bouncing the coal stocks because it was a pretty, um, well, weak start to the week uh, yep. for them. But you spoke about oil just before. Yep. Um, Woodside Energy perhaps reflecting that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're more gas, but hey, they always trade around the oil price, don't yeah. they, at the end of the day? Uh, yeah, but some weakness, obviously, Woodside taking down that sector. And let's have a look at the retailers. Yes, indeed. Um, we were foreshadowing that uh, it was, well, a slightly weak day for some of the retailers. And uh, just as we get that graphic up now for uh, the retail space, if we can, there we go. Um, Premier Investments, uh, yesterday actually it was at down, uh, it was ex dividend today. Uh, can't find an adequate excuse. It's just it, bad it's news. It's the UBS downgrade. UBS downgrade. There I you go. suspect. And, yes, indeed. And uh, well, you can see across there too. JB Hi-Fi, Harvey Norman, Super Retail, La Visa, those retailers we do track, all lower. And um, well, yeah, there just doesn't seem to be any end in sight for this pain that households are going through, especially totally with- um, not. Not. Further rate hikes coming. Absolutely. And um, people are actually starting to tweet the insurance price increases that are coming mm. through are absolutely massive. So when you put, um, you know, price increases on energy, AGL price increases, mm. now insurance and yeah, it's, it's pretty grim out there with your mortgage going up as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough world for many people at the moment. It's and, um, well, it's not surprising that people are pulling back on spending on discretionary items. Um, speaking of, well, uh, another consumer stock, I guess you would call it, mm -hmm. uh, Bubs Australia has caught our eye recently. It was the stock of the day on the call. We had Carl Capolingua with Michael Wayne uh, talking through with David Koch what they thought about Bubs Australia. I 
2016, 2015, when you had Bellamy's A2 Milk, yep. Barb's sort of listed around that time. That was the, really the hype stations um, for that sector overall. Mm. And really, you'd have to say that it's never really lived up to all that hype chart is the next best thing that anybody yep. could do. Anybody can look at a chart and say that, well, look, right now, whatever I might think about it, the market doesn't like it. Um, so, and, I, and just because the market doesn't like it now doesn't mean it won't like it in a few months and, you know, I can come and look at it when it starts to go back up. And I don't yep. mind missing out a little bit. I don't have to buy things at the bottom all the time. I mean, um, if it's 15 cents and I have to buy it at 25 cents because it's starting to turn back up in the trend, um, you know, that's okay. I'd rather do that, then bite at 15 and see it go to zero, yep. which, which you know, is an outside possibility for this because, as you said in the start, they've just got so many problems at the moment. Yep. And just important for context there too, uh, the stock was up 28% today. Uh, Danny, you've got the, the news there that uh, was driving that home. Well, there's two aspects. First of all, um, they've got FDA approval that they will be able to manufacture from the Victorian plant for the US market, which is very important. And also that the US business is actually uh, gaining some momentum in the go-to-market channels. And they've actually achieved the first $1 million month of sales on Amazon's e-commerce platform in May. And uh, yeah, they've also seen their direct consumer business continues to grow strongly with year to date revenue of 1.8 million. So that looks like they're forecasting net revenue to be up between 20 and 22 million for the full year versus 8.1 million in full year 22. So coming back from the doldrums, one might say, when you look at that share price. Yes, and uh, well, maybe those with a bit of intestinal fortitude rewarded there because it hasn't been an easy ride for no. us recently oh, by gosh, any no. means, but no. hey, uh, managed to uh, retrace about 28% of that sell-off. So, oh, yeah. uh, well, things have to start from somewhere, right? So Absolutely. we'll see how we go from here. But um, let's get to our guest for the COB today, and we welcome Will Simons from Macro Capital. Uh, Will, great to see you there. Um, I'm not too sure if you sniff around much with, with Bubs at Macro. Have, have you ever um, had, a, had a nibble at it at all? Look, it's not really a sector that we're particularly yeah. um, keen on, particularly at the moment, being kind of consumer discretionary. Um, it's not really a company that we want to be heavily allocated into. Um, they've also got quite a few issues at the moment. Uh, and I think uh, at the moment, despite the good news, uh, they've got a number of bigger issues. So I'd like to see more kind of positive sentiment flowing into the stock before it'd be something I'd be looking at adding into client portfolios. Mm. And in terms of the markets, because um, obviously, you know, big rallies in the US, S&P 500, NASDAQ, but the rally's looking like it might have broadened out a bit. Australia, we've had a bit of a rally up until today. Is it time to put more money to work in the markets? I think it's a it's a tricky one. Uh, obviously, the uh, American uh, recovery or rally in the markets is significantly outpaced uh, domestically. Despite that, Australian markets rallied about two and a half percent in the last five trading sessions. Uh, I do think a lot of that qu could be attributable to window dressing, um, but I do think it raises the question. We've been speaking about this uh, recessionary environment for such a long period of time. When that's going to hit, and how hard that's going to hit. Um, I think it's important to probably separate the share market from uh, the economy uh, and kind of look at what um, the market's telling us. It is possible that a lot of this recessionary environment has already been priced in to the market. Uh, and so when you have a look uh, in the kind of post-COVID rally in the markets, the majority of that rally was driven by retail money uh, and kind of the institutional money found themselves caught on the sidelines uh, and they needed to get allocated into having missed uh, a lot of the rally in the markets. And we saw a similar thing recently with the FANG stocks over in the mm. US, uh, where retail money drove the majority mm. of that rally. Uh, and what we saw uh, last week was that uh, net inflows from institutions was the highest that they've been uh, in three years. Mm. Uh, and so it looks like institutions are starting to flow back in, and that could push markets higher. So I think at this point in time, we're not wanting to miss out on the potential upside there, particularly whilst the Australian market has underpaced the US market. Uh, and so we're starting to cautiously reallocate uh, a portion of our capital back into the markets. Uh, and one of the ways that we're looking to do that is through an ETF um, such as STW, uh, which does the top 200. 
uh, or VAS, which does the top 300, get that kind of broad market exposure without taking on the um, individual company-specific risk. Indeed, and uh, I guess one of the big swing factors here, um, and a thematic as well, will be obviously that that China story. Everyone was sort of, well, emboldened a little bit, um, maybe hopeful if nothing else, that uh, maybe some you know um, more strong stimulus will come through from the PBOC. We've got something over the last few, oh, a week or so, but I guess from here we'll just be keeping an eye on that recovery. Yeah, I think that the um, the Chinese recovery has certainly been ailing uh, to some extent, and China's implemented a number of different measures to try and uh, support that recovery, the most recent of which was obviously um, the cuts to the one- and five-year loan prime rate um, yesterday, both of which were decreased by uh, 10 bips. Um, but despite that, we actually saw Goldman Sachs overnight um, decrease their forecast for Chinese GDP growth um, from 6% down to 5.4%. Uh, and so I think the question then becomes, how far is China willing to go to stimulate the economy and kind of get things rolling again? Because uh, they've certainly shown they are willing to keep stepping in and keep uh, implementing different measures. Uh, and so if you are looking to kind of gain exposure to that thematic, we've obviously got a number of iron ore miners domestically. Uh, ore's up about 20% over the course of the month. BHP and Fortescue have already uh, rallied quite a lot. Uh, and I think that you might want to have a look at something like a mineral resources, which hasn't rallied uh, nearly as much, gives you that diversified um, lithium and ore exposure, whilst also being um, underpriced relative to some of the other miners. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it hasn't performed as well, mineral resources, has it? Do, no. do you think that's sort of been the delays that they've had in the lithium operations and the fact that they're at the margin, a higher cost um, iron ore producer? Look, whilst they are um, higher cost in nature, um, I think they are a really strong company. If you look at where um, they were trading when BHP and Fortescue were at these levels, Mineral Resources was trading $90. Uh, they're currently trading about 73 uh, And so I think that um, the upside from here is certainly there. Uh, obviously, um, Mineral Resources and the other iron ore miners are more cyclical names. Um, and so, with this recession, it is still um, kind of playing it by year. Uh, but as you kind of start to reallocate capital in, um, looking at best in class, and I think uh, relatively mineral resources is a reasonably attractive buy at the moment. Interesting, okay, so a bit of a catch up trade there possibly. Um, so coming days, I mean, we spoke about Powell's testimony. I mean, is that the big one for, for, for you guys? Anything else on the agenda that you'll be keeping an eye out for? Um, look, I think Powell's testimony tonight's the major thing. We've got a few other FOMC speakers for the rest of the week, um, most of which are a little bit more hawkish in nature, uh, but I think Powell tonight's uh, the major thing. Yeah, interesting. Well, it's going to be, um, well, I, I like it, of course. I'm the central bank, well, I wouldn't, wouldn't say it won't, but I liked it. The same thing. It's the way I like to pass my keep, time. Keeps you entertained. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, I, it's my thing. I, 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 I would struggle to find another period in time when everybody has been hanging on every word of every central banker yeah. and trying to find as many different nuances out of it. Yeah, it keeps us in a job. But um, Will, exactly. really appreciate your time as always. Nice. Will Symes from Macro Capital Thank there. Okay, let's take a look at the leaders and laggards, shall we? And uh, well, the leaders were fairly mixed, Felix. I suppose, in terms of um, just, there was no, I think, consistent thematic no, through there anyway. No. I, I try to find some news on Telix. I, I know that they've got some kind of investor strategy like day in New York uh, tonight, I think it is. I couldn't find anything that might be a, an actual impetus for that, but that, that, that is today. Urology, they've got a urology innovation showcase, apparently, that yeah. came out today. There you go. I'll just have a quick look at that. Uh, Lake Resources, having been heavily sold off, it looks yeah. like that one's having a bit of a trading bounce, doesn't it? And Magellan, I, I might have misled you yesterday. I'm yet to you find... Did not. I did Well, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Have I'm we got not. any reason why Magellan is going for such a strong I, I don't know. Moment? I mean, the lay lay person like myself would just say, well, it's uh, it's an equity fund. The equity market's going up. Flows are going back in. I don't know. That's that's the best that I can do for you. But um, <laughs> I, I do know that you, you sort of said yesterday that there I might have been some... I thought there was some... somebody playing around Just in accumulating terms of a bit, right? options, yeah, mm, okay. um, in that one. So, right. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that story if it does happen to manifest. Collins Foods and Elders too, I guess you could kind of say ag themes there um, coming uh, out on that leaderboard. Uh, let's look at the laggards though. 
And uh, flight center down 6.8%. Um, oh, it I might have been, a, was there a downgrade on that one? Let me just have a if quick If that's the look. case, it, it's come through later on in the day because right. that wasn't there when I checked 30 minutes ago when I was trying to get a right. head start on the wrap, uh, to be perfectly frank. But anyway, we'll, we'll keep an eye out there for flight center down 6.8%. TPG Telecom, actually, that was news today. Correct. That was fairly uh, noteworthy in terms of slapping yep. down, I guess, data sharing. Is that the best no, way to phrase No, I think it? it was the infrastructure sharing Infra with um, Telstra. Yep. So one of the regulatory bodies uh, put the kibosh on that one. Okay, yep. um, so that's that's um, hit uh, TPG Telecom. And Telstra shares were actually higher today, or at least when I last checked, that was a few hours ago. So um, hitting TPG um, specifically. Uh, Premier, we've already spoken about the retail yep. theme today. IDP Education, I don't think there was anything there. No, but just it, probably we had, some profit taking after yeah, we it have been it, for such a big run. Yeah, I think it was down to 20 bucks briefly, and you know, it's yep. had its little bounce back, and now maybe starting to stabilise around that that level. Certainly not where it was, unfortunately, for me. Um, but anyway, that's uh, the lag. Let's get across the small caps, though, um, see what's driving things there. And Bubs, oh. there we are. We spoke about that. The stock of the day, up 27.1% uh, or, or thereabouts. Um, otherwise, well, we've got a, a list of A's minerals, there. Azure, Archer, Archer, materials. AMA, Anson. Yep. There we go, some uh, resource names there. In terms of the lag guards and the small caps, uh, Xanadu often on that list, Regional Express, uh, my favourite, Jeffrey Global back. <laughs> Making an appearance. Absolutely, they haven't responded to our calls, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm doing them free marketing every every day <laughs> when I say their indeed. name. I, I feel like they should just come on and tell us their story. I like it's an eco-friendly kind of story for a hippie like me. Oh, okay, I don't know the story, I better look it up. Yeah, it's, you know, ethically sourced mineral, uh, rare earth minerals oh, okay. or whatever for um, uh, the green... Green. Electric, yeah, all, yeah. The, all the, the transition, all the nice buzzwords, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, but I'm sure it's, yeah, I don't know too much about the company, I'm sure it's a wonderful company <laughs> anyway. Um, let's go what's on overnight, and well, we've covered it off, uh, Powell on the Hill, oh, exactly. Um, so that will be kind of interesting again, trying to articulate why they paused when they did. You're gonna skipped. get skipped, skipped, sorry, you're right, <laughs> although he, he got a bit. Snarky, remember last week. I don't know if you saw it when, when they suggested it was a skip. He said, I shouldn't call it that. So, anyway, even he's he's got onto snarky. the skip bad one. Yeah, he was, wasn't, wasn't happy. Wasn't happy, um, Jeffy. Goolsby speaks. Um, yep. Sounds, again, like a character out of Scooby Doo. And uh, UK May headline CPI, which will actually probably be out already. Would you be able to just yep. type in Forex Factory for me by any chance? Because we might Forex as well Factory? get, or get through that because normally that comes out at about 4 p.m. our time this time of the year. So, that would have been 20 minutes ago. So, um, if you can um, yep, I'll do for it, see uh, if you can find that. In the meantime, uh, it was expected to moderate very slightly. Uh, there is still uh, the belief that the Bank of England will have to be all the more aggressive, though, in its policy and push rates higher um, from here. Um, again, you're just getting that up, and I, I do want to get across that because it is, it is reasonably interesting as we look to go down. And CPI came in. Higher than expected once again, and core CPI increased to 7.1%. So this is actually reasonably significant Ooh. news because over the last two prints, we did yeah. have uh, a number that, is, uh, specifically for that core figure, um, has come in higher than expectations that, on both occasions and is mm. actually trending higher. So core they CPI... Might do a, sorry, a 50 basis point uh, rate hike of, over the back, off the back of this. That's Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. And yeah. the headline number as well has jumped back to 8.7%, which mm. um, is in line where it was last month, but it was expected to come down to 84 So hold on to your hats. That might be a theme for this Here evening. Watch uh, bond yields and whether that starts to, um, you know, maybe weigh on equity prices. It's the highest since March 1992. Wow, there March we go. 90, you know what else happened in March 1992? Yeah, I was in London. What, you were born? Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> anyway, I'm having too much fun. Um, okay, uh, last but not least, let's just check on what's happening. <laughs> Make you feel hot? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, that's what we've got um, coming up tomorrow. China markets are closed. Uh, the Bank of England meets tomorrow. You just said 50 yep. could be on the table now. And existing um, home sales, US. In the United States, indeed. Did you see those new um, home uh, starts? Were very, very strong in the US. Really? Yeah, very strong overnight. Uh, yep, up those? about 22% or something. They've got the same problem as we do. Like, they have underbuilt. Right. Or they just don't have enough supply. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought that was quite interesting. Interesting. Even with mm. sort of you know mortgage rates at five percent, it just hasn't hasn't necessarily stopped things just yet. No, not at this stage. Interesting. People well, aren't moving, but maybe people have decided, or the builders just uh, decided we need to build. The demand is there, and people can afford to buy. Just that shortage story again. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, um, 
We'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on the reaction to CPI overnight, as well as Powell's comments. It could be an interesting 24 hours. We'll see how we go. But um, we'll wrap it up there for another day. Remember, uh, you can catch up on all the news and interviews on your website and app. Um, otherwise, Danny, we'll call it, call it a day. Absolutely. All right, see you tomorrow morning. Bye.